first albino T negative anole I've ever discovered. It's like the old 80s that, uh, song, yeah. you know what I mean? Ebony, Ivory. Yep. Yeah, sorry, you're a punk rocker. <laughs> Probably more Look at that. Oh, that's so that's, cool. That's, that's another crown giant, they don't bite. Oh, there almost, you go. There. I thought you said they don't bite. Those do bite, by the way. <laughs> What do you guys think? Beautiful, huh? We're hanging out with Ron St. Pierre and Heather Moy. She's over here. There she is, oh, everybody. These are the lizard couple. And uh, I, I mean, Ron has been a name that I've heard about even before I moved to Florida in 2004. In fact, I tried to get on your property when you lived in Loxahatchee, Florida. Yeah. That wasn't happening. It took a few years, but we, we've become friends. And uh, I'm really excited today because we're gonna walk around his beautiful lizard factory, if you will. Pretty much. And uh, we're gonna see some really unique lizard starting with some blue tongue skinks. Tell me about these two. Uh, this is a melanistic east, a hyper melanistic eastern. It's a obsessive mutation that's fairly new to the US hobby. This is an ivory, which is a, it's also a simple recessive, correct? correct. Yeah, it's a, so this one basically deletes most color and pattern. Okay, and that and one? this one is just totally overwhelmed. Okay. And then, um, So you, you, they're ebony and ivory is what you're saying. Basically, yeah. yeah. Paul and uh, Michael. That's exactly. In the old 80s right, song, yeah. you know what I mean? Ebony, ivory, yep. yeah, sorry. You're a punk rocker. Probably weren't <laughs> listening to a lot of Michael Jackson. Although Beat It was pretty good. Yeah, it was Come everywhere, it man. Was, uh, Everybody you, you knows had that. To, you had to deal with it. Sorry, guys, we're going off the, the trail here. If you're old men, you know it. Yep, exactly, or women. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're gonna hold this while we're getting out of light. Matt's here, by the way, making sure that the optics are, are nice for you folks. So anyway, blue tongue skinks, um, these animals, uh, they are found in Indonesia and Australia, correct. correct? yeah. Very cool. So in nature, talk to me a little bit about their natural habitat, what these guys like, what it involves keeping them here. Um, actually, they're very simple. Um, you know, they're they're basically an omnivorous, opportunistic ground feeder. They eat whatever they can find. They mostly eat a lot of insects, but they'll also eat fruit, cool vegetables, stuff like that. So they're kind of a, a raccoon type thing, gotcha. you know, of a lizard. And they don't. They're mostly they live on the ground. You know, they they don't have the ability to climb much or anything. So that's it. But yeah, they do really well here. So the other cool thing about blue tongues, if you guys are just seeing them for the first time, they are a very ubiquitous uh, animal, and they they are found in the pet trade because they do make good pets. Yeah. These are the you know these are adults. Yeah. Honestly, this is probably the best, most suitable pet lizard there is. They just have never caught on to that level yet. But, I mean, they're very easy to maintain. They'll eat a wide range of food. You can basically feed them off a grocery store. Gotcha. Stuff. Awesome. Let's see their setups, man. This is just a simple setup. I love it. You're using uh, what looked like similar to Waterland tubs. Yeah, they these are. Is... These are, this is for raising babies. Okay. Waterland turtle tubs. So we Was use... this the right enclosure for yeah. this one? Yeah, that's where that one. The, I ripped the, cut the bottoms out and replace it with wire so they drain. Awesome. And then, um, yeah, it's just a simple setup. Very this simple. Is very temporary. This is what we, where, like I said, we're actually in the process of rebuilding all of this. We're moving to aluminum frame for everything Gotcha, now. yeah. I appreciate, you know, it's, I just want to say thanks to Ron for allowing us to come in here. Usually, you know, people, uh, you know, they don't want to show things off when you're in the process of changing yeah. things out, but I really do appreciate that. The nuts that. and bolts and, are the interesting stuff. Yeah, man. exactly. I want you guys to see, you know, what you need to do when you have a larger scale operation like this. Where do you want to take us next, Nate? Um, all right, I guess. If the bananas are out, those yeah. are pretty cool. I love banana pectinata. I love iguanas. This seems like a little bit more of your personal project, the banana pectinata. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about it. I don't see any. They might have gone in. They get a little they did. shy, huh? Yeah, they did. We just recently moved them. We had them in a large, um, or we had them in a, a smaller enclosure than they are now. Okay. Um, and it was solid walled, so they weren't able to see out like they are now. Uh, now they're able to have full view. So they're a little bit shy still but they're coming they're coming around i'm seeing them out quite a bit more frequently a couple of my girls are now gravid my more dominant males yeah. are obviously the first to <laughs> the first be, to come out yeah be totally fine with it and not not be bothered so yeah they're doing great i'm really excited to have these uh open up for them so these we used to have the lace monitors in right. and repurposed them for the bananas so we're still doing some work on the enclosures but i definitely wanted to get them moved over before they were really breeding um yeah. which they are now uh, so these they have full access to front and back so they're um 
eight by eight. Oh, wait, so they so, get Yeah, they have oh, yeah. full access to the back as well. That's amazing. So, yeah, so there's a pair here. I've got a pair here, 1.2 here and a 1.2 here. So and again, got plenty of space. Yeah, I, one of the things I liked about um, Ron and what you guys have built um, is you're in Central Florida, considerably, uh, considering Florida, most of you guys are still cold up north, but in the winter, it does get fairly cold here. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're using, a lot of the times you're using underground burrows? Yeah, I mean, that, that ba so basically this is what they overwinter in. It's basically a wooden subfloor. Hey, check this out. I, I, got, I just love showing this because it just gives people, it gave me ideas also. So wooden subfloor, okay. Yeah, see the entrance is right over there. Oh, and done. yeah, so basically in the winter time, I take just bags of mulch unopened and stack them up on there and they work as insulation. And then, um, and it keeps it toasty warm. Then we wrap this entire thing in six mil plastic. Uh -huh. And then we vent it depending on how hot, how, it how hot it gets, yeah. Very cool. So basically you can do it without any electricity whatsoever, but it requires you to be there all, because the- We have to manage it. We have to, it has to be managed. Yeah, we yeah. have to manage it. Okay. So, and, and it changes every day. You know, there's some days that we're out here venting at 9 a.m. There's other days that we don't vent at all. There's other days, you know, we have to kind of keep an eye on it. Okay. And we're watching for the sting to disappear in the air for the temperature yeah. to rock it back up inside. But you need to be here in order to manage that. That's not something that can yeah. be done and you're on vacay or, you know, working or something like that. So, yeah. Very cool. But That's yeah. beautiful. They're beautiful animals. I like the banana pectinata. Great. Again, you're really working with um, good what I would consider pet species. That's you know, basically the, what we specialize in. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And now, Ron, you've done so many different uh, lizards in your um, career. And you've been doing this, I mean, you grew up down near Miami, right? Yeah, in Miami. Okay, so a whole lot different back in the day. Uh, you were collecting animals, you were just doing a lot of different stuff. Um, what's been the most rewarding thing about reptiles for you uh, in your, I guess, close to over 40 years now? Or? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's not, that's it's dating me, man. Ah, uh, come on, it's all right, I'm, um, I'm the same way, buddy. I'm, I'm getting older too. Yeah. Are we going this way? Yeah. All right, but what what do you think it is? What, what has been the, the coolest thing in your career? Um, I mean, if I would say what the pinnacle of stuff that I bred, it would have been the lace monitors. Okay. Um, but in general, it's, I mean, honestly, it's gonna sound sappy, but really it's been the whole, the whole thing from the community to the, you know, what I do and, you know, when we go to shows, so many people come from all over to see us. Yeah. And, and that's, that's that uh, right around the time the big shows usually come up, I'm kind of getting burned out from slogging away out here in the heat all year. And this, they kind of knock you back into, you know, get, oh, me, yeah, get like, me reinvigorated to gotcha, come back yeah. and keep pushing. Very cool. Where, yeah. are we, where are we headed now, mate? Well, this is all giant anoles. Oh, cool. And this is all under construction. This is going to be a, a hundred, Let's have a look. 120 tanks like this. <sighs> Eventually there's a bunch over there that aren't. No way. This is the new indoor section. This will be mostly geckos. And this is a Nolus rikerdi, which is a pretty rare giant anole from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's something, you are so into anoles. How, what is it about anoles that just gets you excited? I mean, I grew up catching them in Miami when I was yeah. a kid. And okay. when I was 16, I, I dropped out of school to do this for a living. Because Get out of here. I, yeah, I was, I was making so much money at the time just catching anoles in Miami. You know, they're all introduced species, so they're all non-native. You do it all in the city. And so it was all in my neighborhood. And when, before I had a car, I used to walk the alleyways and catch them. And so then, wait, in the city, you'd find lizards actually in like urban areas. Oh yeah. Like wow. my neighborhood, I would get up in the morning and if I saw Cuban and Oles, big nine and Oles hanging yeah. on the trees in my front yard, I knew it was a good day and I'd go out and most days I'd catch 50 of them. I wow. eventually, by the time I was in my twenties, I was the primary supplier of those to the U.S. That's crazy. Trade. So that's funny. I think every kid that came to Florida when I was a kid Caught coming to Florida, we just catch brown yeah, anoles, they're everywhere. anoles everywhere. That was like the coolest thing yep. because in Long Island we didn't have lizards, but it turns out we do have lizards in Long Island. Right? I didn't even know you just about don't see them. the Italian wall lizards. But uh, so let's talk about record out here. Is it possible for us to to see one to through, get one to yeah, get one? Yeah. yeah. Here's, well, the, the, is this a natural? Morph then? This no, it's not. It's not a morph. Yeah, this is just this is, this is how the they species. are. Right. Very yeah. beautiful. Let me see if I can find like one of you them. You got it. There's one up there. Yeah, that one's. The f I just don't want to mess with the females. All the females are gravid right okay, now. Okay, that makes sense. How cool Ooh. is that? 
Well, I'm going to clip this microphone this back one, on me. This one's a, the female, which I didn't want to get out. Oh, but. I screwed you up. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. But. Anyway, that's kind of what they are. They're, wow. These were zoo-born. Uh, okay. May I? Yeah. I'll be delicate. They will bite them. you, but. Oh, that is, you know what? That is really different. Where's yeah. the male? I mean, I just saw him. He was just right here. That shows you how camouflage they yeah, can Yeah, how become. well ad adapted they are to this. It literally disappeared. Went down to the bottom corner. Now they'll drop tails, right? They can, yeah. They can, okay. Well, Look at that. Yellow. That is so Yeah, and these are not so colored up. These cool. turn bright colors. Yeah, this is really these interesting. Are, these are angry and, and they're cold, So they're because it was 66 here last night. So wow. these were on loan with a friend of mine. I got them back a couple weeks ago, and, and now I'm setting them up in here. They're more of a cool weather and all. Really? Yeah. So Dominican Republic, are these guys more, are they found at a little bit of altitude or? It's hard to get a lot of, they're, they're found all over. So okay. I, I would imagine they are found up on the sides of the mountains and it just depends on where the original founding stock was collected. Okay. These were from a zoo. This is actually, guys, this is kind of a cool looking lizard, man. Um, smaller, but probably very active. They actually like get a lot bigger. These are about half. Do they really? Yeah, they'll get about 40% larger. No way. Yeah, they're still. The texture of the skin is also very interesting. They have a really nice texture uh, on their skin. It's very. Yeah, um, I wish they were up, but it's they're really not. cool. But no, that's that's cool. I'll that's show you interesting. The, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. See, they're starting to change now. They're getting the bands. Wow. But they get they get a lot like blue cool. and. Really. Yeah. So anyway, I commissioned a guy, a friend of mine, to build to all build these. these. So we got the first round of 40 of them a couple of weeks ago. And again, bio, you're going to go bioactive. Yeah, it's fully bioactive. It's full of isopods. and That's great. I just, uh, it's it's just better. It's, yeah. it's kind of a pain because you have to search for the eggs in a larger space. You can't confine the eggs to one spot with these guys. And they lay one egg at a time. But then you're saving, but you're saving time, time cleaning. Huge amounts yeah. of time, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, once there's, and we're eventually going to add springtails. They just haven't come in yet. So once the springtails are in here other than cleaning glass there will be no maintenance, maintenance. Really. are you going to do any plants. kind of dripping misting do they require no, I, anything like they that? they do and i okay. but i do it all by hand you just that and you know and a lot of times doing something by hand like that allows you the opportunity to be hands-on that's exactly why we're and you it. can see what's going yeah. on with the animal a little bit better that's this is a lot of work this is a nice building man you've got a lot of room for these guys so this is a major project you're doing yeah this is ju it just started this week wow okay and, and uh, this is all brand new. here i'll show the so the first thing I did was the gecko room which okay. we produce a bunch of um, we produce the azanthic and lily white morphs of the crested geckos okay so cool yeah. and it is cooler in here yeah this is a cold this is our cold room so yeah. oh wow Plenty. check these out Matt you're gonna dig these yeah I still have to put the UE bars up oh wow we yeah. just got them in here yeah. what a cool lizard so that's huh? an azanthic Whoa. crested gecko oh my god the shape of the head that's wild isn't that wild looking and you know they blend into the tree bark oh he's gonna go your way yeah that is so and this is like a velvet you're it's like you're grabbing velvet this skin feels like it's almost delicate yeah that's these guys tough. crested geckos they're not where are they from South Pacific New, New, New Caledonia. Caledonia right okay yeah I don't know much about them but they've got this loose skin down here what's that loose skin for is it to help them glide or something you know like do you see this it's almost like they've got little wings yeah i mean all of those um are basically like that they have this kind of leathery oh, loose skin. skin all the new caledonia gecko species for okay. the most part um, I'm sure, sure it serves an, adapt, an adaptive purpose. Yeah, either looking from branch to branch. That's what I mean. Yeah. It almost looks like it could become something that allows them to just, it's like air brakes, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing could be that when they're rested up, it looks like the folds or bark or yeah. something like that. They, they do blend in very well. That is awesome. Now, a lot, some people will remove the tails from these, right? Is that true? Um, the tail, they can throw their tail. They, they'll get, like, some of them, when I move them the I other day, the they just threw its tail off oh. just from moving it into a new yeah. enclosure. That's crazy. So they do do that. They can drop their tails. They're These are great, though, because they're such an attractive and interesting species. They eat nectar, is that right? Like there's Yeah, they eat a lot of that. They also eat a lot of insects. Okay. We feed ours a pretty varied diet. Um, we give them rapashi, which is the yep. the nectar type yeah. uh, diet. We also give them some fresh fruit. We give them a lot of different insects. But here's what I like about this. You know, you guys, if you follow along, you know I love creating the habitats. I love, this is like a little slice of the, of the forest that these animals are from. And the way I always 
I always feel like these animals are jewels and right. they should become part of that natural environment. I love that, you know, you've got things set up like this. It yeah, looks I really mean, cool. Honestly, I'm, it's pretty terrible right now. Oh. Once the pothos grows all yeah. in there and then, then it'll be, you know, but I l literally put this together last, this was last week. It took me three days to put this room together. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is, a, look at all this guys. This is amazing. Yeah, there's, and there are different morphs of these, right? Well, we have the two main morphs that, that are currently, uh, there, <laughs> actually there's three and we have we have Ooh, excuse me um, um wow okay yeah we have we have all three but this room is pretty much devoted to the two it's basically all geared around making azanthic crested geckos and it's it, just funny. lily white azanthic lily crested. white azanthic it's so many times and and this happens to me is that we get uh enamored by the larger animals right um like when i go scuba diving i want to see the giant turtles or a big group or a shark but there's so much interest in some of these animals that are more cryptic and you don't yeah. necessarily see and these are another great pet species because of their kind of ease of care they like cooler temperatures yeah. um that's that's really cool i mean that was always my primary thing was giant lizards i yeah. was a cyclura guy right. i was a monitor guy and a tegu guy and my entire career was boa constrictors i yep. founded some of the first boa morphs that's amazing man. that was my thing but you know as times change and technology changes you know the tank systems that we have now the lighting the misting systems and all that it just lends its it, and and the entire industry seems to be going in this direction it's gotcha. it's smaller things you know that you can keep a naturalistic river it's basically our version of the saltwater tank right and and that's another cool thing because the you know the it becomes like a focal point of your home yeah a, a curiosity and yeah. it's, i always loved having i always loved going to the zoo because you'd see some really cool exhibit there. yeah and exactly that's why i love you know i'd love to have something in the house with you know like like you said the pothos and maybe some of those lizards just hanging out and i think it would, it's a cool way to get the outside in if you will yeah really nice yeah eventually these are going to be heavily planted like i yep. said the pothos is to start it and it should fill up the interior and then we'll put some different kind i'm experimenting with different kinds of plants and cool stuff but so yeah so that's this is one room There's wow 48 crested geckos in an entire room <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> no that's awesome now the pothos is it i know that the um solomon island skinks will eat pothos. yeah they destroy it right now that pothos isn't found on new caledonia also is it you know i don't know yeah it's interesting i'm curious because it just seems like such a it's it's like an industry standard plant because it grows quickly it's and you can't it's hard to kill right it's yeah i mean funny. i kill plants that's right. what i we do we can keep lizards alive but we kill alive, plants right it's amazing yeah, it's, it's fun. So uh, we have anoles in two different areas. The, the adult giant blue beauties are over there, but okay. so most of this, all this, yeah, you don't have to, all this is, <sighs> so that eventually you're going to have to come back in a, in a year because yeah, of this, all these tubs are going to be set up a as giant tree frog breeding thing. No way. Yeah. I'll be back. Ra raising man. up a whole bunch of exotic tree frogs That's for that awesome. purpose. So they were just delivered and I can't even move them right now. Oh so. my gosh. All right. all right. So this is all different anolis. So let's see. From what uh, locale or what? So all of these, this whole thing is de dedicated to the giant Cuban species. Okay, look, we have some right here, Matt. Yeah, those are. But these and these can be found in Florida as an invasive, or would you say an invasive? They're How? They're, they're actually not. They were. They're not classified as invasive because they don't actually damage the environment. They only inhabit already massively disturbed areas. Perfect. So the anole found in Florida has been reclassified to Anola sequestris floridana. So it's actually it's a naturalized species. Very cool. It's the same designation that should have been given to green iguanas. Yeah. Since they, they're not the competing green with had, other animals. Well, not not only that, but green iguanas have been in South Florida since at least the 1960s and more. Than than likely at least the 1940s and there was even a paper written I, I don't I can't I can't remember the exact thing but that showed that that considered the northernmost range of the green iguana to be Key West so yeah I well mean, we we are a peninsula sticking out into the Caribbean correct hurricanes happen in the Caribbean these lizards are rafting very easy for them to wind right, up and in green Florida. iguanas are master swimmers uh, they can you swim know what? extremely um, far if you go to Island Key on Instagram uh, Kelly Young she's a an outdoors woman and she fishes she was about uh i think she was 20 miles off the coast of south florida green iguana swimming they they yeah. saved it find themselves way offshore grab the landing net you know or i'll do it oh my goodness look what i just found floating in the middle of the ocean 
He is completely alive right now. He swam right over to our boat to get on. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. This is gorgeous. So this this is, is a Cuban anole. Yes, this is a baby T-positive albino. Holy crap. I, I mean, I'm getting a new respect. Can you tell how bright yellow that is? I can, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, that's incredible. Yellow. Very angry little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do, now, what's the difference between the, the Cuban anole and a night anole? Are they the, the same? No, it's the same animal. The same animal, Yeah, yeah. They're the Cuban night anole. The Cuban night anole. Yeah. All right, so it's a questress is the... Is yes. The, now, equestris is Latin meaning horse, right? Why do they, is is that what equestris means? Yeah, I guess because it's big. Okay, <laughs> the horse and all. I never really looked into that, yeah, to I'm be honest. Yeah, I'm a nerd, dude. I want to know. So I like I, but, entomology. But I want to know what the language is. you've to a new level. This is great. Yeah. So is it a male or a female doing that? This is a female. It is. Now, males and females, do they have the same size dewlaps or? Yeah, they're basically identical, except that the females are born with this white banding. It's fading really? now on this animal. So yeah, they're sexable right at birth, which no makes it super way. easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. That that is easy to pair them up down the road. I mean, how long till you get an adult? Uh, I have adults. No, I mean, how long does it take for one? Well, for this, that, yeah. Um, generally, ours breed at between ten and twelve months. Get out of here! So yeah, they grow really fast. fast. Yeah. Holy yeah. smokes! Insectivore. Uh, no, they actually the same, pretty much same as this crested gecko. They out. eat a lot of this nectar. Is so they amazing! Eat I've never a lot of that. fruit. They eat a lot of. We feed them a very wide variety of insects, and they get rapashi diets, and they get whatever fruit is in season. That's incredible. So that's a very good survival tactic, though, yeah. for a lizard yeah. to become an omnivore. You know, yep. they're living in a really good environment for both insects and fruit when they live in trees. Highly arboreal, yep. correct? Uh, um, are these guys found higher up usually? These are, they're called crown giant anoles because they're all found in the crowns. Like uh, right now in these trees, there are night anoles, Florida ones, in all of our trees. And we find them every once in a while because they will come during breeding season. <laughs> they'll come down. Actually, you were here, I think, yeah, once. Yeah, one was, and one was, yeah, trying, one to get was in. trying to get in. Yeah. That's right. But you never see them here because the trees are so large in central Florida that and they be, don't need to come down, so they stay up there. That's so cool. It would be so fun to kind of get up there and see how these yeah. animals live at that height, you know? Yeah, they're for sure up there. That is so cool, look at that. So that's Beard. Yeah, he's right here, yeah. There he goes. That is great. So how many are in that enclosure? Just one? Um, in this one, there, yeah, just one. Okay. So this is all stuff that we're raising up for ourselves. We're kind of out of season right now. Okay. So that's a T-positive albino. Right. I've been working on that animal since 2013. So that's, so that's a 10-year process. Wow. To and, finally get. And this year will be the first year we'll start actually really selling it. I've sold a handful, <laughs> one or two here and there. Congratulations, man. There you go. So you can, where can people reach you if, if they wanted to acquire? A fairy tale dragon. Fairy tale dragons, guys. Got to Google that. Um, it's on Facebook. You have to talk to the boss lady. Oh, over. yeah. Heather's the boss over here. She's standing back, making sure that Ron, Ron doesn't screw anything up. Here. Yep. Somebody's got to. So these are these are false chameleons. False Anolis chameleons. Nolas Barbata. Okay. These are babies. Wow, so, may I? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That Thank one's you. in a shed. Yeah, these, guys are, wow, these guys are really oh, tame. Yeah. Um, they're all like this. They've actually become kind of popular now. So that these are these are cool. nowhere near full grown. These are just animals we're raising out. These are about half grown. Wow. So it's do they eat their skin? Yeah, most of the time. I won't I won't oh, take that wow. meal from you, buddy. <laughs> they have an interesting face. Yeah. They're called they're called a twig anole because they live in the in the sections. That, so. Uh, Anol to think about anolis, you need to think about each tree as an island. Okay. And so the crown giants, the big ones, they live all the way in the top. They control the upper area, similar to how the Lichianus geckos yeah. control New Caledonia. Then as you go down, the anoles get progressively smaller until you get to the bottom of the stump where you have the stumpers, which are things like brown anoles and, Interesting. and stuff like that. And if These you look at their patterns, halfway. you look at their patterns, it's more like bark. Yeah, they're fat. Not like leaves. Yes. So that's awesome. Yep. So there are twig anoles, and most of the Caribbean islands have a version of this. Really? Yeah. These just happen to be, Cuba has the biggest ones. And you can see where they get the false anole uh, you know, name, yeah. they their used, eyes. They used to be classified as under their oh, own Oh, chameleon, thing. I meant Chame chameleon. Chameleolus. Oh, hello. Good yeah, they, jump, guy. Yeah, they, lady. This was the first albino um, T-negative anole ever, dis ever oh, discovered in South Florida. Really? So this came out of the wild in South yeah, Florida? Yeah, all of them that I have. This one did too. This is what? another another mutation. I'm currently crossing these together to see what the combo. Holy smokes. You know, it's funny. I found yeah, night anoles in right, my... Uh, right, and that's not even colored up. Now. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool. I, I found night anoles in my property. You know, I yep. have them. 
it's just incredible to see them up close like this. The head is incredible. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. Now it's night with a K. Yes. So I guess maybe the head is like a lance or something, you know, who knows? Who knows how they name these things, but they're <laughs> cool, man. That is incredible, Ron. And it, it, what's even more incredible is that these animals came out of the wild and survived. Yeah. To Did you get them as adults or were no, they? No, they, they were babies. They were babies. Yeah, okay. people found them in their back. Like this one was found in a backyard. He's pretty geriatric now. Like I said, he's, he's an older he was guy. born in 2014. So how, what's their age limit usually? I, I don't know. I have 10 year old females that are still producing. So wow. they're in there and he's, he's almost, ouch. Oh, he's there, almost, you go. Oh, there you go. He's almost 10. Um, and this, this one was caught last year or the year before. You got a mouthful there. Yeah. yeah. And they, they feel so amazing. Yeah, they're cool. They're like rubbery. They got a rubbery skin. Feel that? Isn't that cool? Oh, wow, that is different. Yeah, it's really nice. Very delicate, it seems like. That is a cool looking animal. It yep. is bright yellow, too. I don't think you can see No, I know that it's that it's is, it's incredible. Wild. Look at the eyes. I mean, look Yeah. At now, they can't move their eyes independently no. of each other, not no. like a true chameleon. No. They, you know, it's funny. The, the animals generally were sold to green anoles. Correct. Carol- as, Carolinas, chameleons. as chameleons yeah. when we were kids. Yep. Um, and that's inaccurate. They're a completely different genus and completely different family as well. They belong in the, they're iguanidae, aren't they? Yes. They have. Now, well, they used to be. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they might have it. changed it. But right. can you, do you know about pleurodon teeth? Do you know what that means? The no. pl- pleurodont was one of the ways, and I was hoping that you could, I don't want to screw this up. Pleurodont teeth, as a kid, I remember reading what makes an, a, an animal a member of the Iguanidae family, and one of the traits is pleurodont teeth. The teeth, are they sit on the inside of the jawbone. Uh, it's the way the teeth sit, pleurodont. I don't know, don't mean don't, dentist, dental, don't, yeah. you know. So if you guys know, in the comments below, do let me know. Refresh my memory. I'm going back 30 right. years, man, reading books. But uh, let's get this back in here. At least you'll know what pleurodont, to look for pleurodont. It was one of the ways that, that they, that, don't worry, I'm right there for no, this okay. old man. Um, it's just funny. So most New World lizards, of which the Nidanoles are members, are going to be in the Iguanidae family. Right. Uh, so, but there are some iguanas Stand found, sorry, there are some iguanas found in the Old World or in the South Pacific, in the, the Fiji, Fijian iguanas too. But what? what so is the, this, that is this awesome. Is, this is an Ola Smallwood Eye. Smallwood Eye. Yeah, it's another type of wow. Cuban crown giant. Jeez. It's not colored up. They, these normally, that, that looks cool as it is I know, though. but these things normally have, you can see all the blue on the stomach. You know, it's funny because I'll see some of your posts is. on Facebook and, and I'm like, animals, I mean, how exciting. When you get up close. And see how big they are. And see how big they are and see kind of the colors. And I'm sure when you set them up in a really cool enclosure, yeah. they're going to be active and yeah. interesting. And, and uh, right, look at the activity. Right yeah, there. that's really cool. Yeah, one, and they're more robust than I used to think they were. Yeah, too. They're, these are the, well. The, I really only work with the giant and all this. This okay. is all. These all used to be the same thing. They were all under the equestrious complex, but then they split them all up. Um, but yeah, thick the tail is in there. Yeah, this it's one thicker. was that tail regenerated. Yeah, this is a regen tail. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. This is a extra male small would I. That is so cool. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these animals. They're different. I'm definitely learning a more appreciation for the species. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. That's and you know what else is yeah, cool, guys? It's changing while... You know what else is oh, really, really cool? Is yeah. Matt gets excited, which is neat. You know, Matt is... His yeah, world's been opened up, up right man. Oh, that... He is changing color. Yep. He just went from like a mint green to a darker... Wow. Yeah, I'll show you some more. Some yeah, th- this is really cool. I'm getting excited about that this. That one That's... is very cool. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Smallwood eye, brah. That's the smallwood eye. It was cold last night, and so they're all kind of out of it. But... By cold, you mean in the 60s? Yes. Yeah. Cold for them. Cold for them, all right. Not cold enough. How far north do, do they go in Florida? I'm told that there's a colony of them in downtown Jacksonville. Wow. Which surprises me, but I guess the microclimate inside the city keeps it warm enough. Um, let's see. Where are... Where did you get these these uh, rolling racks? Uh, some guy had them on eBay. They're basically old Home Depot racks. That's cool. 
Yeah. Really good. Yeah. I like repurposing So we bought stuff. all the ones he had, so we have, then we have more sitting around different so places. So cool. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, they worked out real, that was her idea, and it was genius. There you go. It was a game changer on this. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this is an, an anole that we, that there were none in the United States. Okay. The people, there were, there, uh, let me rephrase it. There were a couple of them here and there, and nobody really had much success breeding them. And they were sent to me on breeding loan, and the first year we produced like 40 babies. Wow. Oh, there it is. It's right up on yeah, the corn there's, stalk. there's one, but I'm trying to find like the bigger males. And, oh, yeah, I, oh there, wow. Yeah, there's some. No way. Well, that's a female, but this oh, is Anolis ludigolaris. Wow. And it's another, here, you can hold it. Thank it's you so it's much. It's another crown giant. They don't bite. Okay. I love it. Until oh, they bite you, and then. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. That is awesome. Look at this. And you can see yeah, these, do you, but do you see the, the feet? Do you feel the little hairs on their feet? Yeah. yeah. So here's you one feel that? Helped that helps them yeah. climb. Yeah. There's oh, wow. one that's more colored up. Right. What? That's, no, that's what I love right there. That is sick. They do bite, yeah, but. I thought you said they don't bite. <laughs> His mouth's open. Some of them bite. If it's got a mouth, when, it, it can bite when, you. When you, when you, yeah, they're the least aggressive. When you put these inside, they all tame down. That's the females so cool. almost never bite. This is the male, he's, you know. You can really feel the grip on yeah. the pads, yeah. on the toe pads. Yeah, it was like a mini Velcro. Yeah, a micro isn't that Velcro, cool? Yeah. See, these develop nice, like light blue bars, and that's pretty. You're colorblind. Yeah, but it, it's I can still see it's pretty. <laughs> Very unique. I can see it's pretty. Um, man. And the, yeah, and the banding on the tail. Banding down the tail. That is. Very I like them because they're lizards. Here, I'm gonna put this little dude back. Yeah. That's so rad. Yeah, a real, you know, I knew I would get a new appreciation for anoles when I came over here today. Because we didn't spend a lot of time with them the last time I was yeah. here. I was kind of fixated on the larger lizards. Looks like we're gonna get a spot of rain here. But um, yeah, this is this is awesome, man. Let's go look at some other stuff. All right, let's do it. Who's water? Yeah. That's mine, grab it. So cool to get a different perspective uh, of these different animals in a different section of the hobby, which is neat. Oh, here, well, let me show you. The, so the albino anole that I, the big one that I just showed you, these, this is, uh, they're baby ones in here. So, yeah. Look at that thing. Yeah, so this this is a baby T negative albino, which is different than the T positive. Wow. And that is awesome. It's almost highlighter yellow. Yeah. Yeah, Very these cool. guys get crazy yellow. And they tend to get brighter with age. Wild. Just very curious looking. They're looking around. Oh yeah. Alert. Yep. That's so, cool. So far, we've developed all all of the morphs that are currently proven and developed have been done by us over the last ten years. That's pretty cool, man. For these, so, yeah, yeah. So, new ground, new stuff. Everybody right now is is uh, I don't know. I get bored and start working on new stuff. Right. All right, so now let's go look at the giant blue beauty anoles. All right, giant I mean, there's blue There's a bunch beauties. of them over here too, but they're smaller, but the big adults are over here. Would, they, would you say this is your crowning achievement? The blue beauties, or no, are, they, are mean, they like the, the anole that you think is the most attractive? Yeah, I mean, I do think they, they end up being the, uh, the uh, they're probably the most beautiful giant anole and possibly a lot of people consider them one of the most beautiful lizards wow. in existence but all right that's eye of the beholder stuff gotcha but yeah i dig them i like them because they're really big um and they come in a huge range of colors unfortunately they're probably not going to be that colored today because it's cold and rainy it's colored he was, but instant. Look at that! Instantaneous. One side has changed; the other side is not. And that's just mood, right? He's yeah. nervous, so. That's. Wow. I mean, these guys get bright, bright blue and yellow. So this is your non-colored. This is what you're saying is. Yeah. This is light. this wow. is this is this one's angry, and so it's not colored up. It's pretty. Let me see if I can find. Wow. One that's in a brighter mood, but yeah, they're all. There's a pair in every enclosure. See, there's another one back there. The back. Oh, it's got wow. a big blue head on it right Yeah, now. that's sick. That Holy. Just bananas. Those do bite, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. Don't you go losing a finger on me now, Matt. Got to hold that camera, buddy. Here's, there's two of them right here. 
that are sitting out. Oh yeah, yellow and... So wow. They're extremely variable. So there's a lot that can be done with these through selective breeding, I think, over time. That is, that really is something, man. Yeah, and they go down and they lay an egg in the pot every week, and I just pull the pots out and find the And egg. that's how these animals got into Florida. That's No, actually, the, these guys, this particular one is not introduced in Florida, but, okay. they, but the, the regular equestress is. Okay. And it was an, from what I understand, it was an intentional release ah. from the University of Miami in the 1950s, I think. To perform it was function. It was a test to see if an introduced species could survive in South Florida. Fortunately, you know, like I said, they're non-invasive. They don't damage it. Right. They're already just inhabiting the, the, the land habitat. that the true invasive species. That would be us. us yeah. Um, you know, terraformed. And gotcha. when we terraformed it, we create a warmer environment. Our cities, they had the microclimate of cities are much warmer than if they right. didn't exist. So we create the environment for mo most of the introduced species in Florida, with the exception of a handful of them, are really confined to the city. Gotcha. They can't really spread out. So, and even the Burmese python is really confined down there in the basin in the Everglades, and you don't really see it any farther north. Yep. So it's, Interesting. Beca it's because it gets cold enough to keep them To keep at them bay. at bay. Yeah. Wow. So, and it just takes one hard cold to uh, knock them all down. So, let's see. It's getting nice and sunny and warm here. Yeah, so, so they guys will up. start coloring up better oh. at some point, but probably. And that dog is, so he, there you go. Look that, at one, this, that one's somewhat wow. colored right there. Oh yeah, so awesome. So as it as it warms up, they're just they're getting uh, they're getting their colors. So but yeah, all these enclosures. That's what's in these. These are. And then um, we have Australian frill dragons here that we're growing really? out. Yeah, that Heather. Heather's growing out. See, there's some right there. Oh, look at that. You can, That's you can awesome. open up if you want. Really? Yeah, yeah have, a, have a peek in. I'm not reaching in. I'll just put the camera in. There they are. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh, that's so that's, cool. That's the money shot right yeah, there. Yeah, you never see that in the captivity usually, or at least I never do. There is a proper frill dragon response. That is awesome. That was cool. Holy smokes. Yeah, Dilophosaurus, a, man. That's something oh, she'd wanted for a while. And Isn't that yeah. awesome? They're totally camouflaged. Yeah, she had wanted those for a while, and then a, a, a nice captive-born group came up. and Wow. So we bought 20 that of them. Is. That wow. that's neat, and they do good here in Florida. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're so very awesome. very well suited for for Florida. That is great. Yeah. See, there's, there's different ones. There's yeah, there's different one. ones here. There's that, twenty of them total. There's look three at this in guy. each one of these, and there's look more at this out guy there. Right here. Right. I want to show you guys. Look on this vertical yep. branch. You see that? Isn't that neat? And you could see that just the. I love to see camouflage in in use. There's actually two on that stick. If you come around the other side, I'm gonna help yeah. you out. If you come around the other side, guys, right over here, you can see the other one. How great, I love the enclosures. Yeah, she These can actually just bird give you, cages. she can give you much more info on that, cause. That is so awesome. But yeah. Wow, that's all right. We're actually gonna, I think we've seen quite a lot today here uh, with Ron St. Pierre and Heather Moy. And uh, Fairy Tale Dragons is where they can be found, right? Yep. So that's your website, fairytaledragons.com? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's. That's your website. It's tail with a T. Come on in here, come on in. It's tail with a what? T A I L. T A I L. Okay, very Before cool. Autocorrect. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, I just want to say thanks to Ron and Heather for having us over here. Come on over here, Ron. I know you, you get a little shy, but uh, we really appreciate it, man. I always yeah. appreciate you allowing me to come up here and hang out with the both of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to see you too. Guys, you know where to go to find uh, some of the coolest, most interesting, best pet lizards that you can, uh, especially if you're living up north in uh, limited space. These animals thrive and do well with your help. All right, guys, thanks so much. Leave a comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all soon. Take care.